think it would be neat if you just you just fell asleep on the couch. Yeah, I think that would be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Just fall asleep on the couch. This is a great record. This is a great record. Dave reviews for the Take Me at My Will. No. 10 out of 10 would nap again. Right. No, you just couldn't handle it. It's too much. No, I just blacked out. Right. I don't know. It's just gone. It was too it was overpowered too by Jingle. Yeah. No. All right. I think we might keep that. Well, welcome back to the long play listening party, everybody. Uh, we're here with the creepy jingles, uh, Joss, Nick, and Andrew, along with Megan Luttrell, perennial long play listening party fave. Uh, if you haven't listened to her episode, go back and check it out. It's a fantastic episode. You get to hear a bunch of great stories behind her songs. Uh, but we're not here to talk about Megan tonight. We're here to talk about <laughs> creepy jingles. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, they're outstanding new record take me at my mm-hmm. wordplay uh first six tracks are in last week's episode we are picking up with cardinal cinnabon number seven and mr nate if you will hit us with the wonderful sounds like the opening sequence of a James Bond movie. Like, I don't know what's happening. Uh, Somebody's yeah. gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Question about, about the songs. I know you said Trojan Horse Girl was one you wrote in 2011, but I'm wondering, like, are all of these older songs, is there a mix or some of them brand new? Um, and how you how you chose to kind of Put them together and even if there's there's significance to the order too on the record uh, there were there's probably about two or three of them that were written in, two, written in 2011 and then some written in like 2016 2017 18 19 i mean i'm always writing it right. just sort of depends on the group of songs together you know it's kind of like when you're cooking and you're like okay well i need some citrus here it's like no uh, you know i need i need a little i need a little sweet i need a little salt um i need something vinegary so it's just all about sort yeah. of playing with uh musical flavors and finding out which songs sound good against each other uh, in the right group of songs, I mean, I think we recorded 15 songs and we came to 11 for the record. We put out Thrown in the Femme Fatale, which was a song that we put out before the record, uh, but that was part of the group of songs that we recorded. It just didn't fit on the record tonally, I don't think, as far as what we wanted to build and the flow of the overall record. So, yeah, I think it's just chosen based on... Um, kind of knowing and feeling uh, what songs sound good uh, juxtaposed with each other and when you sort of, you know, are water and flow into the next track and then when you want to slam the brakes on it and take it a whole other direction, it just sort of depends on my mood and uh, the sound we're building and I think, you know, things that sound nice off of each other. Well, Joss, Are there any you wrote specifically for the record that you were like, what's missing? I don't know. It's missing salt. So I got to write my salt. <laughs> um, uh, Saved by the Bell Jar was uh, the song at the end of the record is um, is a very different song from the rest of them. And. Uh, some of the newer songs are like, you know, Nicotine Mom and um, uh, Working Class Clown and Enoki and Him and Her. 
Um, so uh, they're all kind of peppered in there. It's 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 sort of hard to say because you know I've been uh, writing for so long and I just sort of stockpile songs and uh, you sort of see I throw it out there and I, I I bounce it off the guys and most of the time they stick but you know it's just listening to the band and finding out the things that they really vibe on and you know there's only been maybe a song that I've tried to like bring to the group that they've been like, oh, I don't know if this is like, it feels like a creepy jingle song. So most of the time uh, it's just trusting my bandmates and knowing what works best for all of us. And I, and I, I know that they're not going to, I want them to have fun and believe in it too. So um, sure. the choice of uh, working with the guys and coming up with sounds that uh, uh, are nice in conjunction with other sounds. Gotcha. And Joss finished the lyrics for Cardinal Cinnabon at the Lake House. Yeah, I, I, there was like oh. five, five songs that I that I finished uh, that weekend. I I either uh, write it right away or I wait and put like a uh, a clock in front of me. And five of the songs were like, okay, I'm gonna write these on the fly, and that's fun because it, it it puts me into a, a, a pressure seat, you know, and really back against the wall and i feel like sometimes you you make magic with that so some of them mm -hmm. were like held back and oh i'll finish it eventually I'll finish it eventually and then i'm writing as we're driving down to the you know ozarks i'm just in the van and nick and i are chatting and i'm just sitting there writing lyrics while we listen to music so so like how did uh i mean back to the vocals on that song how did how were those recorded because I mean, it just seems uh, uh, maybe a little like more distorted or aggressive <laughs> than some of the other vocals were, or was it that just how you were singing it? It's it's yeah, it's it's like saying out of like a, a I don't know the exact mic, but it's it's a copper mic to and there's like okay. a, to, to like sort of have a distortion. Maybe Nick have a better well, idea. He's more was, of a gearhead than I. Am. It was just kind of like a World War II era bullet mic thing. Yeah, copper that, mic. Okay. Okay. Super, okay. super uh super blown out, you know? Mm. And it was okay. all that's that's not an effect. That was organic. That was just a mic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Wait, also we're like, what's the dirtiest sound that we can come <laughs> up with? And we yeah. talked about copper mics and you know Zach's a whiz. So when you throw an idea off at me, he's like, I got just the thing and dials it up and there we are. There it is. Yeah. So this is not necessarily about the album, but could could you all just give me like a short history of your creative journey, like how you got into music just in general? Uh, yeah, I mean, my my family, my grandfather was a honky tonk musician, and as was a lot of people in his family. Like his mo his mother, my great grandmother played guitar, um, accordion, and his honky tonk band. And he raised me for the first few years, so that's kind of like I've always loved it. But I didn't really. I tried to play guitar for way too long um, before picking up. <laughs> uh, in eighth grade, I, I got into, I started a band, a punk band in eighth grade, and kind of just played on and off until, um, as a drummer, you don't really just, I mean, I'm not a songwriter, so I'm, I'm always, I always have to find somebody that uh, I believe in to play music with, you know? So projects came and went for me, but yeah. Um, for me, I think uh, I was always singing. And uh, through high school, um, I mean, I think through grade school, through high school, but like I was, I was in like uh, choir. Uh, I was an all-state singer in Missouri, um, and uh, I, I was part of that scene. And I kept trying to get my friends to write songs with me in my senior year because, like, I didn't know how to write mm -hmm. songs. Um, it, but it was like a desire of mine at that age to like go oh I, I would really love to write songs and I started messing around and then I kind of took a break from it and didn't think about it for a while and got a guitar when I was I think when I was about 20 years old or so I started working with other musicians who would play guitar because I couldn't play guitar so I would just sing melodies and come up with lyrics 
off of what someone else is playing. And I got tired of that real quick because I have to depend on someone else to like express it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, kind of go there, you know, and it's, it's a weird place. So teaching myself just to play guitar, <laughs> add a necessity to write songs for myself and not right. to like hope that the guy next to me gets it. Right. And uh, from there, yeah, I just sort of like became a, a passion of mine. So I've been doing it for about 20 years and uh, it's, it's pretty fun, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it is I'm, fun. I, I'm, I've devoted this much time to it, so apparently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's been times in my life where, like, uh, I, I didn't want to write music, and I still found myself writing music. Even I took three years off yeah. from the stage when I was going through my transition because I felt like it was necessary for me to, like, focus on right. me for once, instead of putting everything else, everybody else's opinion, whatever, in front of my own. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think finding that authentic uh, authenticity within myself made me a better songwriter. Uh, I could objectively yeah. Uh, yeah. be able to relate to the world around me and, and have a clear picture of what it was and also be able to put myself in other people's shoes, which all these songs aren't necessarily written from my point of view. They're written from other people's point of view, sometimes of myself, of what they think of me or um, experiences that I've had. So it's uh, the, the cool thing is there's no rules in songwriting. So um, even when I didn't want to do it, I felt like I was cursed to do it. So it's a blessing and a curse. It's something that's like, as soon as you get done with the record, it's like, oh, I don't know if I can do that one again. Do that again. That, was, that took a lot of effort. And then it's like next week. All right, we got to get back into the studio because I have four <laughs> songs that I want to work. So I do it to myself. Yeah. And right. So that's my story. What about you, Andrew? Uh, I was uh, uh, a jazz trumpet player is where I started okay. out. Um, I was second chair trumpet and jazz band in high nice. school. Um. And then I got a bass guitar. I wanted to be a bass player. And I got a bass guitar at first, but then I realized quickly that I wanted to write songs. So I got a guitar maybe junior year at high school and taught myself guitar and started writing songs. Um, and then I played acoustic guitar and songwriter stuff through college. Um, uh, after college, I started, uh, when I realized that I might not go down the career path that I was thinking about going down, I just went full into music lifestyle. Um, I, I, uh, started a couple bands on guitar, um, had a punk band for a while as well. Um, then I met these guys, uh, in Kansas city that were kind of into the jazz scene or the jam band scene, sorry, the jam band scene. And so, uh, but they, they already had a thing going and they didn't have a drummer. So I bought a drum kit and I taught myself drums. <laughs> I played drums with the jam band for, for a few years. And I played in a nineties cover band, uh, on guitar for a while on rhythm guitar. And then, um, and then I, I too had a hiatus from music for a while. And uh, then, you know, Creepy Jingles needed a bass player, so. I've been egging him on for, like, years because Andrew had a son, <laughs> and he was he was working at his uh, job, which he was a part owner at, so he was investing a lot of time and energy. And he's like, no, nah, maybe I'll get back around to it. I was like, you need to keep making music. And I was like, come on, play, play, play. Yeah. And then eventually, like, he had the time to do it, and it was like, be in the creepy jangles with us. It'll be fun. <laughs> and uh, finally broke him down and uh, he joined and uh, oh, we're happy to have him. So he's, he's made a big difference. Nice. Nice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's baselines were great. Um, one thing I found interesting, uh, Nick, when you were talking about, you know, you're not, you're not really a songwriter. So you, you kind of had to find projects where, you know, there were songwriters, um, but something that Josh touched on earlier, which was that you played drums sort of like a songwriter. So I, I didn't know if, uh, if like, that just was interesting to me um, 
that, you know, what Josh said earlier compared to how you were said, Hey, I'm not a songwriter, so I need to find people. So um, I don't know if there's something you guys can like expand on, on that sort of. I mean, songwriting or songwriters is probably my favorite genre of music. If you could call it that. And, you know, like um, I grew up listening to James Taylor. I mean, obviously all the old, all the old country stuff, but then Paul Simon, JT, that's James Taylor, uh, Timberlake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and like old Jackson Brown records. And like one of my right. favorite drummers, yeah. one of my favorite drummers is Russ Kunkel, who plays um, with uh, all those guys, actually. Uh, Paul Simon. Okay. Left. But, and the way he plays is just always carving out space for the moments in the song that, that really need to be heard lyrically. And I love that. So I think I, I, I do pair well with songwriters because I, I really pay attention to the lyrics and and stuff sure. like that. But I'm not I'm not the kind of guy <laughs> that, that uh, is creative enough to write. But I do appreciate it maybe more than anything else. No, know. no, no. That to- that totally makes sense. That's that's awesome. Cool. Um. So yeah, we've been talking for a while. So let's listen to Anoki and him and her. Is that am I pronouncing that right? Cool. All right. Let's hear it.
lot of surf guitar in that one. Yeah, yeah. Harsh and like you're, <laughs> you're saying with the vocals, like that's sort of what I was talking about. Like if you listen to a song like Cardinal Cinnabon and then you listen to something like that, like they're two different completely mm-hmm. yeah. vocal uh, takes and approaches on how, how to sing that song, you know, so. It's just sort of listening to what the song wants it to be, wants itself to be, you know. Was uh, was the record hard to sequence? Uh, it flows really well, but I can see how it might be might have been tricky to do that. Yeah, I I think it was it was mainly me and Zach talking about the sequencing as far as like the order and I like the idea of the record starting off very sort of poppy and catchy and there's also like this meta theme of like don't take things at face value because mm-hmm. i think we've been labeled just a rock and roll band i don't think we're just a rock and roll band with songs like that um you know pop songs and yeah. like it, it's just sort of like uh you know finding it, it's you know it's a it's a reese's pieces uh this the sweet and the salty next to each other so it's just yeah. sort of listening to those sort of things and yeah um, that's i think why that song went on the record is because we didn't have that color on the album we didn't have that genre we didn't have that sort of feeling so uh when you get to like those songs it sort of informs how the second side we wanted to start sort of oh this is just a catchy pop album but by the end of the first side, you're seeing it sort of taking a turn. Yeah. And that is sort of like the Trojan horse in itself, like getting you in the room and locking the door. And it's like, okay, <laughs> this is one thing, but we're going to Vegas, baby. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and you're like, I thought we were going to grandma's. <laughs> no. No. Oh. Now Mommy I take needs a little... to pay your mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, She's going to uh, find you a new daddy. <laughs> so Gaslight My Fire is next. Uh, is there anything you want to say before we listen to this, or should we just listen to this and then uh, talk about it? Uh, it's a really uh, fun song. It, you know, it starts off... Uh, with this, they were written in sort of two different sections. I had written the first part, and uh, it was a very sort of earnest songwriter thing, which I knew Nick would love. And um, I wanted it to sort of take a hard fucking left turn at the last second, you know? <laughs> sort of like, oh, here we're going, wham, you know? And uh, yeah. make him sort of like jer- jerk him around a little bit. So, gotcha. Yes. All right, well, we have that's fun. Uh, yeah, let's hear that then. Sweet sound to see. 
It definitely it took the cha- uh, it took that left turn longer than I was expecting it to, but that was cool. Because I felt like you were saying that it took a left turn like towards the end, but like it, it was a pretty like decent, you know, amount of 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 music of left. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, there was a there was a decent amount of left there. <laughs> And I think we were talking about the album as a whole, right? With the left turn and and oh 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 okay, the sequencing of the song toward the end of the album. Well, and, and with this song in particular, for sure, though, too. Um, oh, okay, but I, I do think it's like it, it was. Any I'm writing sections, I'm not thinking like this is a section. I'm thinking this could be a whole song, and then it's just me mm. sort of like improving on the idea or spending more time with the idea to know that like it could go somewhere else. And it's fun to sort of set the tone and the, and the table to like say, you know, uh, we're having a dinner party and then in the middle of it, knock all the plates off, like rip the tablecloth <laughs> off, and start breaking dishes. And I just, I love those sort of, uh, those, uh, crazy sort of left turns that happen, uh, whether it be in film or music. And I just wanted to sort of put my spin on that sort of idea, I suppose. I know. Yeah. Love it. How are you got anything? I'll just keep listening to music. Nothing if you want. specific. Yeah. We can keep going. I mean, I'm just, I'm just enjoying it and it's a real, it's a great record. It's a great, yeah. you know, accomplishment as a band and as a songwriter mm-hmm. and, uh just uh it's both i mean there's a lot of uh there's a lot to dig into if you want to but it also can kind of go down easy and just be something you just bop along to so it kind of works on both levels for me yeah i think i i think i that's also like another like meta theme as far as like how the record you know being seen as okay this is just going to be a pop record then you can just listen to these songs and go, okay, that's nice. And then really start to dig into the lyrics and there's Easter eggs within Easter eggs. Mm-hmm. I reference songs that I've written before. I reference all kinds of different things. Like and nothing's really off limits as far as like my songwriting process. But um, I guess that's sort of uh, how it comes out. And on, let's keep uh, listening. Painting the text with the ending there kind of leave you hanging. Yeah. Uh, what did I, I had a question during that song? That I didn't. 
I have a question while you're thinking about it. Um, okay. So how how did those lyrics come about? It's about um, a lot of the record. There's like relationship themes in it. Um, sometimes I switch like point of views, but um, with this particular one, it was sort of like a personal one of like feeling like I was giving to friends and very supportive and then feeling like um, I wasn't getting that back. Um, and that was a big letdown, feeling like they uh, weren't involved in my life and feeling like it was a one-sided relationship and sort of, you know, just like, okay, I'm sort of understanding, like talking to somebody, it's like, what do you expect? Like, you didn't put any work into the relationship. That's why we're at where we're at right now. Like, yeah. you didn't care. So it's just sort of commentary on that. Should we uh, should we shout out the other members of the band on this episode specifically? I mean, great guitar solos on almost every. Yeah, song. yeah, I, and I wish uh, you know Travis wasn't tired because um, <laughs> <laughs> he's doing some really cool stuff. Um, oh That's yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I guess uh, yeah. May, may, maybe so. Well, he has a whole uh, nighttime um, routine. He's got a skincare thing that he does. So, like, it. he has to get home and start that. And God bless him, you know. We're, we're getting older, so we're trying to take yeah. care of this. And, and I love that. Um, yeah, it was about the... Uh, so, obviously, you had... Uh, you know, you used acoustic um, on some stuff. Just for the record, do you play it live or do you just go, like, electric? more into the arrangements because we're starting to expand it a little bit um i've always played on acoustic when i'm at home when i do solo gigs i'm playing on acoustic typically yeah so i started in the coffee houses i started writing songs like andrew you know uh on acoustic and nick on acoustic guitar uh, that was the instrument and uh yeah, that's that's where I feel probably most home at as as a songwriter because that's to me where it starts. Um, there's such a process of you know bringing the the group members uh, Nick and Andrew and Travis their ideas into play and how that sort of changes the song and opens it up to do something new. With a song like Tabooed Out of the Building, that was like a love letter to country music because I always like to have a jangly sort of country music song and. Um, you know, like a, a Willie Nelson or a Merle Haggard mm -hmm. or Hank Williams and Do Dolly Parton, uh, those types of artists that it's like, as country songs are just perfect little songs that the melodies just really resolve themselves really nicely and they're tied into a nice little bow. And yeah, this progression sort of lent itself to that. So, uh, yeah, acoustic guitar is very, uh, very much where I'm normally comfortable. So, right on. Sweet. Let's finish it off with uh, Saved by the Bell Jar.
Well, kind of unresolved well, there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so a couple of questions about that. So I definitely hear like some Beatles, um, maybe a little Radiohead ish, like in there, um, which I love about that. And then um, the piano. Were you recording? Like, did, were recording like your a digital piano, or did, like was there like a real piano and like kind of uh, recorded uh, that way? The piano on that particular track is a digital piano okay. that we just uh, blew out with Verb yeah. to make it. Um, yeah, it just uh, we didn't have a piano at the studio and. Sure. We didn't track later on that one, so we did it digitally. And I'm a big fan of Brit pop music, and to me, it is very sort of like Radiohead, Oasis, yeah. Beatles. Yeah, for sure, it's, it's my love letter to Brit pop, I guess. If the last yeah, one, for sure, for me, this one is Brit pop. So like, there's a lot of genre hopping within the album, but to me, that one was the last song because the message is very powerful. I mean, it's a very personal thing to me. Um, but the actual music I feel like is a bridge to what you'll see us do more of. Like, it's just sort of like saying we're, we're, we're going to show you more than what you've seen so far. So, uh, yeah, it's different from the rest of the songs on the record, but it's, you know, it's a season, it's a season uh, one cliffhanger and uh, hopefully like season two, you know? So, uh, I, I think nice. how you, you end a uh, series. I, I, yeah, it's a, it's a definitely a nice, um, track to go out on, but yeah, um, the, what it, it's, it's, it's hinting at is, is super interesting. I'm um, look forward to seeing what, what you guys are going to do. Uh, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very vested stake in this, so I, 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 yeah. I have to continue. To do <laughs> really? more. As long as you buy the record, people like it, love the record. Yeah. You go and share it, and uh, you know uh, we're very proud. This was a uh, a labor of love. It taught me a lot of patience. We've all been through. Uh, personal issues uh, throughout this process of this record. So there's a lot of heart and there's a lot of family and there's a lot of, um, a lot of us growing, not only as individuals, but growing as musicians. So um, we hope that people get behind it and love it. And we hope people come out to the show at the replay on uh, the 26th Saturday, but our, our release is tonight. Um, at the Rhino. This is a week later. Oh, this is the week later. I'm sorry. Our release at. Uh, Let's look no, at I, I won't even talk about the release. Oh yeah, the show was great. Yeah, what, 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 great. Long story short, creepy <laughs> jingles. You can pick up the record at highdiverecords.bandcamp.com. You get your digital. You get your vinyl. Of course, it's streaming wherever you want to stream. Album's called Take Me at My Wordplay. Uh, Jocelyn, Nick, Andrew, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we've loved having you here. Incredible record. 10 out of 10. It was really great. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, Appreciate you having us on and uh, letting us... Yeah, thank you for talking to us about it. Yeah. Thanks for having us. I hope you guys have a good evening. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks I hope again. so too. Oh, I, oh, uh, 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 yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I was gonna say something, but it doesn't apply because uh, we're in the future. <laughs> okay. It's He's difficult. From the future. To keep up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up. <laughs>